Go with me to Colossians chapter 1, will you? And we're going to look at the Word of God. God has so much to say. And uh, we're going to stand as David uh, reads Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Demetrius, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Calvary, Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Lord, we thank you this day for this time that we get to read your word, that we get to hear your message. So we ask you to guide our hearts and our minds, open us up to what you have for us today, and guide us through this message. We pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So the Colossian church wasn't an easy church to pastor or to minister to. Um, But before you would even get to the Colossian church, you might hear their reputation. They had a wonderful reputation of being God-believers. God-believers. And I want our church to be known as God-believers. Some people will say, that church down there, they're a bunch of fanatics. We we belong to a church like that. Pat and I, when we were young, when I was a deacon, uh, we had a reputation of being a bunch of fanatics. You know, really, those, those fanatics. I remember my best friend, he was a deacon in the same church, and he said, uh, if that means that I'm a fan of God, that's okay with me. <laughs> you know, we can be called a fanatic. And uh, he went he went into the full ministry and, and he used to travel and do the do the works of God. He passed it started the church, but he also he did the the paintings, you know, like uh, Bill Itzel's son did, does, you know, giving the gospel through the paint and all of that. And they, yeah, they want to call us fanatics. That's okay. We're fanatics. That's fine with me. Well, they were they had a reputation for loving God. And I want that same reputation for this church. I think we have it. I want to, I want to hold on to it and expand it. Okay? I want this whole church to think, boy, those people down there, they just love God. Because they'll come to this church to hear about God. And, uh, and they'll get saved. And, and it's just a wonderful thing. I never hear anybody complain about getting saved. <laughs> they, you know, everybody's happy about it. Now, I've, I've, uh, I'm getting older and I'm beginning to see a lot of my my uh, older folks, you know, I'm losing them, not only in the church, but I'm losing them in my family, you know. I just came back from a brother-in-law on my side of the family that, that died, you know. And uh, he knew the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, the, the minister got up there and just praised God for the whole time, you know, about his life and how he mowed the grass all the time you know, at the church. And, and uh, when he, then the, the, mow, the grass would, the, the, the grass looked terrible. And, he, you know, he had been dead for a, a little bit, you know. He said he used to break the lawnmower and then he used to fix it. <laughs> well, the problem was it was an old lawnmower. Now that he's gone, they couldn't fix it probably. And they couldn't go to the grass. But they're praising God for all, what a wonderful man he was. He'd go and he'd, 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 uh, he'd bring people in the wheelchairs to lunch and to the hospital visits and all kinds of stuff. He was just always doing things for God. And, and that was just a joyous, joyous uh, time. And so you can go there and you can, when people know the Lord, and, and, and they understand eternal security. Uh, that is, you know, when Jesus said, uh, My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And I give unto them eternal life and no man can take them from me. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? My Father in heaven, which is greater than all, he has them in his hand and no man can take them from my Father's hand. Right. And then Jesus said, And I and my Father are one. Yeah, that's, that's true. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one essence of God. You worship Christ, you worship the Father. You worship Christ, you worship the Holy Spirit. They're one essence, you know. But you're sealed in Him. That is so wonderful. Now, my other brother lost a different story. When he lost his family, he was in such mourning. And I went to see him, and it was like in a dark room, and we're sitting there, and he's just dying. And so I said, you know, once you know the Lord, you're in Christ, and you're sealed in Him. And that's, that's where they are, you know. That's, that's where your son is. Oh, really? Yeah. The next thing I know, I was addressing a whole room, the, the funeral. He had a special service, and I'm, 
I'm getting up there and I'm the guy that's speaking. You know, how did that happen? Because they were so glad to have somebody give the good news. They weren't getting that from the denomination that they were in. They were, you know, give them the good news. Good news that once you're saved, you're saved. E.D. I, I remember one time that, that happened it, it, uh, years and years ago, the very same thing. Uh, a young man, had, uh, he, was, he, uh, he had died young. He was a motorcycle driver and had gone wrong, kind of, you might say, got a little rough, uh, rough and he died in that rough life. However, as a, Christ, as a young man, he was a dynamite Christian, knew the Lord Jesus Christ, went to their mission uh, church that they had. He was just a dynamite, had a great reputation, always praying for his father that his father might get saved. <laughs> well, here he is, he's dead. I'm, I'm talking to his father, and his father says, oh, he's gone, and I, you know, he was, you know, he was, you know, he was a sinner, you know. And I said, hey, I know about your son. He knew Jesus Christ as his Savior, and he's going to go to heaven. Oh, I wish I could believe that! I said, you can believe it, and I showed it to him in the Scriptures. He joined my church. <laughs> he did. He got, he got, you know, all of a sudden, he was a church guy. He was a man that loved the Lord. Why? Because there was hope! Hope. So many of us, you know, we, we go through life and this, we go through hard times and sometimes we think there's no hope for those we love, but there is. If they, once they accept Jesus Christ, they become, they become children of God. I have children, and I'll tell you what, they, 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 they deserve spankings all the time when they were young, you know what I mean? It didn't mean I didn't love them, I loved them. I, the more I loved them, the more I spanked them. Doesn't that sound awful? <laughs> My son had come, when he grew up, he said, he said, Dad, you spank me too much. And I, how do you spank him at all, really? But I said, he said, I said well, son, and this is what I told him, I said, son, if I, I had to do it again, I'd spank you more. <laughs> you know, I, he didn't get much sympathy from me, but I, but I just think I failed him because I didn't. I remember one time when I skipped altar boy practice when I was a child with a bunch, a bunch of other kids, and, uh, and, and, uh, and we disturbed a service, a, a religious service playing outside because we, we weren't where we were supposed to be. And my mother came out, and all the mothers came out from Lady Seority, you know. That's what they were, they were having, a seri Lady Seority meeting. And they came out, and, and, the, and, and my friend's mother came up, come up to him, and to, her, to, to my friend Bob Foley, his name was, and she went, Bob, where are we, what are you doing? And she slapped him across the face. And my mother said, oh, Ken, you shouldn't have done that. I was jealous of Bob Foley. That's right. He became an altar boy, and I didn't. <laughs> Because she corrected him, and he got back to work, and he was an altar boy. Okay? You had, to, you had to memorize all this Latin and stuff to do that. And I was out playing in this, you know. I actually felt jealousy. Okay? So, to, to know Jesus Christ is, is your Savior takes discipline. You know what I mean? That's where we get, where, when it gets hard. After we accept Jesus Christ... We're sealed in Him. But the hard part is to obey Him. To become all that He wants us to be. My mother, she did really want me to be an altar boy. She was very disappointed that I wasn't. She wanted me to be a priest, actually. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, so we, got, we have to know, we have to discipline our children, we have to raise them, but we have the good news. Give them the good news. Give our children the good news. The good news is that once you're saved, you are saved with an ED. And this is what Paul is talking about. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, that means that he's called out by God for a very special office as the church is, is brand new. And Paul is, is writing a lot of the books of the, of the... I'm going to bring you in a few minutes to, uh, to another one of the books. It sounds just like this book because they're both written by the Holy Spirit, but also by Paul. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ... In other words, God... Do you think that anything that happens in your life that isn't by the will of God. You think that every day that God isn't in your life? That's what I'm trying to say. Every single day, God is in our lives. He's helping us. He's directing us. Now, he has, he has purposes for our lives. We may not achieve all of the purposes that God has. I, I wonder sometimes, I'm an old man now, and I, I know that I did not achieve all the purpose that, in, that God had for me. I didn't achieve it because of my own disobedience and laziness and whatever. I never made it everywhere, where, you know, what, what I should... I, I, never made, I never became what I should have been, okay? So even though God has a purpose for us, weak by sin and, uh, and, 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 and laziness or whatever it is, 
we can, we can miss out, okay? But God is in our lives every day, directing us, showing us what he wants us to do, helping us to grow in him. Now, you have, there's three parts to you. You do, re- do realize that, that, that you, are, you, are, um, you have a, a, a body, and you have a soul, and you have a spirit, okay? The spirit is in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. In fact, let's go there for just a minute. We'll just slip over to 1 Thessalonians. It's only one book over. You can get there. Just turn your bu- a page or two. And I think Pat's going to put that up there. Uh, is, are you going to do that? I don't know. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. It says, in, in the very God of peace, sanctify you holy, and pray God your whole spirit. Now that's the part of you that is with God. That's where you commune. When you pray, you pray in the Spirit. You're right there with God. And that's the part of you that's supposed to rule your life. <laughs> when I was out there playing, playing, I wanted to be an altar boy. I sure did. <laughs> but I wasn't, I wasn't in the Spirit. I was in the flesh. Okay? Because it says, uh, your whole spirit and soul that's you. That's you. That's the spirit. You know my, where my brother-in-law Nick is right now? He's in heaven. Because his soul went to heaven. That's where he is. Now, only God knows that for sure. Him and, but I'm sure that's where he is. That's my, it was my, that's my bet. Because I, I know he, he just knew, he knew the Lord. He was a good man. And, and, uh, and he loved the Lord. Soul. That's the part of you <clears throat> that's the you. Okay? And, uh, and then you have the body. <laughs> that's the flesh. You know, that, that's the... We all have a, have a, a fleshly um, a, a part of us that wants sin, okay? I mean, sin is... Isn't sin fun? I, I have a penchant for ice cream. I mean, I used to be an ice cream man, right? I have a penchant for... I love ice cream. It's not good for me. I'm not supposed to eat ice cream. <laughs> All right. That's the flesh. When you see me eating ice cream, and you'll see me downstairs when we have parties, you know, where's Pat? You're not looking? Okay, I'll get me some ice cream, you know. Because Pat won't, Ken, you shouldn't be eating that. You know? But that's the flesh. And after I get saved, I still have the flesh. You know, now the, the, the flesh is, is, uh, uh, is, is desire for money, for sex, for, um, for success, you know, sometimes, and, and even though it, it, it may not be uh, won correctly, sometimes we, we do it uh, through, uh, through wrong means to get ahead. You know, people get way ahead. And, you know, like if you become really high in, in, in a lot of businesses and in a lot of uh, political places, you know they paid some spiritual um, prices for that. They had, to, they had to walk in the flesh a lot of times to get there. And I think it's a real shame. We... I try to look for unspoiled people, okay? But we get spoiled by the flesh, okay? That's the part where we are at war. All of us are at war right now. I want to walk in the Spirit. People tell me, how do you walk in the Spirit? Well, somebody tell me how to walk in the Spirit, please. Pardon? Okay, obey God. I, I see now, see, I, you guys, I've been preaching that too, so it makes me feel good when you can say it back, okay? Obey, uh, walking in the Spirit is just obeying God. Okay? But a lot of times we obey the flesh. Ice cream, you know, and lies and, and cheating and, and, and pornography and all the things that people, that people do, you know. That's the flesh. The flesh. And um, you, 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 it's, in our lives, God wants us to walk in the Spirit. So, who runs our lives? It's supposed to be walking in the Spirit. God, you pray. God tells you what to do. You go and you do it, okay? And you should pray about everything. God, should I buy this car, okay? You know, buy, should I go to, God, should I go to that restaurant? You know, God, what should, what, what should I do today? What, what should my, my primary purpose today? What, what would you have me to do today? Do you do that when you, when you wake up in the morning and you open that door and you say, God, I hope you've already done it before you open the door. God, what would you have me to do today? Okay, what's my priority? You pray about it, you do it. Sometimes you get waylaid by the devil and you, and you find yourself in the flesh. The, the devil loves to get you into the flesh, okay? 
So, you, the, so, we, we're, so the, the, the reputation that the Colossian church had is that they walked in the Spirit, okay? And, and I'm looking now at Thessalonians, it says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Now, sanctify is a level of obedience in your life. I, 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 I changed denominations one time, and, I, and it was all confusion about what sanctification meant. <laughs> when I was in Christian Missionary Alliance Church, where I got saved, they taught that sanctification was you were perfect. And some people achieved perfection. It was really good for me because I was such a sinner <laughs> that I suddenly I found out I'm supposed to be perfect. And so you're trying to strive to be perfect. When I became a Baptist, I found out that it's a level. And we go through levels of sanctification. As we grow in the Lord, God takes us from here to here to here to here. After you've been a Christian for five years, you're supposed to be here, but you're back here sometimes. Okay? But you never go back to where you were. You know, that's no sanctification at all. But we, we try to achieve high, higher and higher levels of sanctification. So obedience to Christ. Lives that are uh, obedient to the Lord. And, and God just loves it. And he, he gives us, another, in, in, in Corinthians it says, you know, he gives you fruit and more fruit and much fruit. And so the higher level of sanctification you can reach, the more fruit that you have, okay? So that when you get to be an old person, you look back on your life, you get there, you look back on your life and say, oh, how God has blessed me. And it was because, no, you, you had a part in that. God had a purpose for you. He, he, he's going to help you. Everything he, when he gives you something to do, he will help you to achieve it. But you have to walk in the Spirit to get there. If you walk in the Spirit, if you're obedient to God, you'll get there. You'll get there. Now, Paul was, was here, going back to Colossians, he was praising them uh, because they had, they, had, they had done so well. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ. Now, there's two kinds of Christians. Now, you, you bear me out on this. There are, are the faithful Christians. Okay, now, everybody who's a Christian is somebody who actually accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Somebody who said, Dear Jesus... I turn away from my sins. I don't want them anymore. I turn away from my sins. Did you just, I know that you are the Son of God. And because of that, I turn away from my sins and I receive you as my Savior and the Lord of my life. What does that mean? It means that I com committed to God. I said, God, not me, but you. You, I'm going to live for you and not for me. That's what it means, okay? I'm going to live for you and not for me. And that's why it says you made him... This, not only a Savior. Some denominations talk about you being a Savior. Baptists, we say, when we, when we need something to the Lord, we say, Savior and what? Lord. Lord. That means you're my Savior, and now I'm going to begin to learn. You're not going to be perfect right away, but I'm going to learn how to obey. Okay? So I, I, I may not have become a Sunday... A, 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 um, uh, a, 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 a altar boy, yes, thank you. But I did go to seminary, and, and, and I, did, I did, uh, um, did all I could to, to change all that, that, that mode of behavior. I, I, I'm going to fulfill all that you asked me to do. A, a call to be an altar boy was a call to go to class and learn the, the Latin. A call to be a minister was to prepare myself to be a minister. And I did that, okay? So I learned from my mistakes. And that's what we do. We have to learn from our mistakes. We trip. That's not the end. That's just the beginning. Anybody here never trip? I mean, never sin? Who? Somebody here? Somebody never sin? I get that from the young ones, but from <laughs> you get to the old ones, we've all sinned. We've all made mistakes, right? We're not all that we want to be. Um... Uh, but we strive to be what he wants us to be. And so our whole life should be to, be to that end, striving to be what God wants us to be. I, I praise God, you know, for, uh, for those around me that corrected me and told me that, no, uh, this, is what, this, is what, this, is, this is how you get there, you know. And uh, how, how do you get out? How do, I, how, do, how do I stop eating ice cream? Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, I learned that from my, from my wife. I, I, I went, I was trying to lose weight. I got to lose weight, you know. 
I was trying to lose weight. My, my doctor told me for years, uh, you got to lose some weight. And so I, this is what I'd say to him. I could do that. That's easy. This is really, this is, as an adult, as a minister, I used to tell him this. Oh, that's no problem. I'll take care of it, you know. And uh, so one time he said to me, Ken, you have to, he was going to retire. And he said, Ken, you have to lose weight. And I said, uh, yeah, well, that's no problem. He said, yeah, but you don't do it. <laughs> oh, man. I love that doctor. He really came with me right straight in between his eyes. He said, but you don't do it. I said, oh, no, I don't do it. So I said to my wife, you know, you've been telling me to stop eating bread and stuff like this. Uh, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try what you do, because I, I, I can't do it. I've been trying to lose weight, and I can't do it. And I lost all that weight. I put some of it back on now, but I did. I really lost all that weight. I finally got, got, it, got it safe and said, well, someone really put it right between, right between the eyes and said, do. And you can, you know, don't just say you're going to do it. Do it. Now, that's what God, these people, they were saints. Do it says that to so the verse 2. To, to the saints. That means these people, when God looked down upon them, he saw people who, uh, who were walking in the Spirit. Now, uh, if, you don't walk in the, if you become a Christian and you walk in the Spirit, are you, are you really a saint? When did you become a saint is what I'm trying to say. When you got saved. What? When you accepted Christ. All right. When you, when you accepted Christ, you, uh, you became a saint. <laughs> but do we all walk as saints? I don't. I mean, I, I try to. I, I remember when, um, when, when uh, my, Mike Morris, I talked to you about him earlier, uh, became a, he was a deacon with me and we both became uh, ministers. Uh, we, didn't want the, we didn't want the title reverend. We <laughs> were reverend. You know, because and, and our, our pastor was reverend and, he, and, and what we call him, was, and we very, gave him a tremendous, a tremendous amount of respect. But we just looked at each other and said, you look like a reverend to me. <laughs> no, I don't look, you don't look like a reverend to me. And so we, but the, our, our pastor said, well, you, you have to take on that. You know, that's when you, when you, get, when you become a minister, you, that, that's what, who you are. When you became a Christian, you became a saint, okay? You are separated to God. You are, you are to, to listen to God and to do all the things that he tells you to do. And, and uh, if you don't, you, you limit where you get. You, you'll never get here. You might just get here. Or you might just get here, okay? That's why I tell you, I, I, I know that I could have achieved more in my life if I had just listened to God more, more. You know what I mean? Uh, but I'm still a saint. I'm still going to get to heaven. But there's, there's, there's two types of Christians, again. There's carnal Christians, and those are the ones that are living in the flesh. And then there's uh, Christians that are walking in the Spirit. And those are the ones that are walking in the spirit of God, that they're letting God rule over them. And you people are growing Christians, and you're doing a wonderful job, all, every single one of you. I'm proud of every single one of you. And I've seen growth in really every single person here. I've seen you grow and, and, and learn, learn the things of God and serve, the, the God, serve God better and better and better and better. And you might think I'm harsh sometimes, but uh, I'm, I'm just trying to, Get everybody to do everything that they can be for the Lord. To the saints and the faithful brethren. Grace. Grace, grace be unto you. He's, he, he's saying that, that, that God loves you. You're, 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 you're headed for heaven. You're doing a great job. And, and God forgives you, your, 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 your weaknesses. And he, he, he promotes you in your strengths. Grace be unto you and peace. Now, so this, this, the, the, the meaning of, of the, the, the two things that we want most in life, right there, grace and peace, okay? Grace. Grace is, is salvation, and it's the, it's the knowledge that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and God is, is working in you, and he, the, you know what gives me peace? Is when, um, when I do something... And I flop, and then I say, okay, God, I'm listening now. <laughs> and I go back, and I try it again, and, and it works. And, and you live in that. It's peace. I have so much peace to know that God is using me. In, you just said today. You know, how many times have I not answered the call when someone said, uh, this person wants to talk to you about the Lord? And you say, but I have to, do, I, I have to be over here. I can't, I can't be there, you know? And, uh, and, 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 and you miss out with that, to the joy. It gives you such peace to, to obey God and then see God bless you. 
Okay, so we all want that peace. Peace to, to know. When I go through trials and tribulations, when, when I heard that my, both of my brother-in-laws just recently uh, passed away, and my grandson just passed away, what, uh, six weeks ago, you know, through it all, I, I was able to maintain a, a tremendous peace about that because I just believe each one of them knew the Lord. Now, if, if they didn't know the Lord, wow. You know, that would have, that would have been devastating. And, and that was really what, what, what troubled my brother-in-law, was he wasn't quite sure about, uh, you know, his own, you know. And, and, and you can't get over that. But if you know that your loved ones are, are in heaven with Christ, I can accept that. I'm going to tell you, my, my wife always tells me, you know, you better not leave me, you know. But I'm going to tell you something. If I die, I want her to have peace. And I want all of you to have peace. Because I know where I'm going. And you know where I'm going. And so if I die, it's just, see you later, we'll see you soon. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I'm going on a trip, but I'm going to see you soon. Because, because you're going to see your loved ones again. That's the peace of God that surpasses understanding. If I talk to somebody who does not know the Lord and does not want to know the Lord, they, they cannot, I cannot give them peace. I've told them that at funerals before. Look, what I'm going to tell you now, you know, so I'll say to them, you know, we'll give you peace. But if you don't know the Lord, I, you know, I'm sorry. So uh, you, you need to know the Lord. Because I know where this person is. If you want to see him again, you need to know the Lord too. It's a great altar call. <laughs> a lot of them say, oh yeah, I want, to get, I want to get saved. But that's not enough. If they get saved, they have to begin also walking in the Spirit. Because now it's a challenge to them that they have to uh, receive the grace that you do. When I make a, when I make a mistake, I, I, you know, today when, when I don't fulfill something that I should fulfill, I know that God forgives me. But I also learn from my mistake. You know? So grace and peace. We're all, we're, we all need that. We need grace to know that God forgives and then he lifts you up. How many times he lift you up? Seven times 70, okay? God's not, not interested in the past. He's interested in what? The present, the right now. The past is the past, it's gone. It's just the right now. God wants us to serve and, 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 and serve him well now. And the Colossians were famous I mean, Paul was, in, you know, he's in Rome, you know, he's hearing about the Colossians, you know, you, get, you go to Ephesus, you hear about the Colossians, they had a reputation. So Paul said, I want to go to see the Colossians, but I've heard about you, you know, you, you guys are doing good, and that's what he's telling them. And so they have grace and peace. I want that, I want, I want, I want forgiveness, and then I want God to lift me up, and get me going. And then I want peace. I want to be able to say, wow, I know that no matter what, God loves me. And he loves my, th those that I love. When, when I get saved, I ask God for five generations. Really. So when my grandson died, I didn't, I didn't lose any of that. Because what I wanted was for him to know Christ. And he knew Christ. I baptized him myself. He knew the Lord. You know, you know he wasn't the perfect person. He's a good person, though, but he, but he wasn't perfect. But I knew he knew the Lord, and I could have peace, right? So I could go on, you know? And uh, so we, we do it. Grace and peace be, be unto you. So that was a blessing from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's, that comes right from God. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. So even though they had a great deal of success, he's saying, now don't get, don't get, you know, don't get, get uh, cocky about it, you know. Uh, I still pray for you. You still need prayer. You're still going to need a lot of grace because you're going to make a lot of mistakes, you know, but God's going to pick you up. Hey, when God, how, do we, how, how should we act toward one another? Because one of the things I saw uh, these last, yesterday, and I've been seeing a long time in you, is, I, I, I'm not worried about the size, but you are a church. You are a real, true church. You love God. The Holy Spirit gives us grace and peace. 
you correct each other. You correct me all the time. <laughs> and I correct you all the time. Right? But we don't get mad at each other. We live, that's right. And I know that you understand when I correct you, it's because I love you. Just like my mother. I, I, I believe that well, my mother should have corrected me that time, but I knew she loved me. That's the same. But I needed some correction that I was telling you about. And, I would have, and, and Bob Fold, he got that correction. His mother loved him. She loved him like crazy, you know. So when I correct you, it's because I love you. And when you correct me, I understand that you love me. And I need some correction sometimes. Okay? So we are to be able to encourage each other, correct each other. That's love. You okay? Because we are a family. We are the family, the saints of God right here in this place. And uh, so we're not going to run wild. We're going to help each other. And to help somebody is to say, hey, I think you do, you know, the, you know we're just helping each other. That's what we're doing, okay? And um, so it says, uh, we give, and that's what Paul's going to do. He's going to come and he's going to correct them. He's going to say, you know, I, 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 he's giving them all the praise. Now he's telling them how much he loves them and how good they are. But then he's going to come there and he's going to tell them, we're going to get a lot of, for this. he's going to come there and he's going to tell them, well, you could do this better, you could do that better, okay? Uh, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, so you see what I mean? He heard of it. He's talking about, he's from a distance. He's writing them a letter and he's saying, I'm hearing about your faith. Isn't that great? I hear about the faith that you have. And, and it's just a, a, a wonderful thing. We heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. That means they're correcting each other and they're receiving the correction. To receive the correction is to say, okay, I hear what you're saying. Doesn't mean you're going to do it, but it means I hear what you're saying and I appreciate what you're saying. Okay, I know you mean it. I know you're trying to help me. That's, that's, that's what we... So you can, we can correct each other back and forth that's very important to us. And, um, but it's okay because he says we always pray for you, right? <clears throat> Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. And that's what I'm talking about. That's where we get the hope. That's where we get the peace. Because we know, and that's what I, if, if I was uh, uh, a great preacher, I'd dance around this, 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 uh, this pulpit and say what? I know that I know that I know that I know. What was his name? Pat Kelly, yeah. <laughs> Great preacher. Before he broke my, my pulpit, hitting my pulpit. But he was trying to say to him, what joy we have! Because we know Christ. I think, he, I think he had a heart attack preaching. I know he died uh, sudden. And it, was a heart attack. And it was either right while he was preaching or right after. Um, but he knew that he knew because he wanted everybody to know the joy, the happiness. And God said... I'm happy too, and I'm taking you, <laughs> Pat. Come on, <laughs> come on up here. We'll give you some more joy. And he took him up to heaven to be with him. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye you, you heard before the word of the truth of the gospel, my friends, <laughs> you did a great job yesterday, and um, and you just laid up some treasure in heaven for yourself. When you get up to heaven. God is going to say, I know I'm saying right now, you know, you did it. Well done, our good and faithful servant. David, you did a beautiful job leading, because uh, he, he and, and, and one of the, I kept calling him, David, would you, could you go do this? Could you do that? But he did a beautiful job. Everything he did was, it was fantastic. It was, it was, when I got here, it was working like, am, am I wrong? It was working like clockwork. In fact, you came out and said it to me. It's all going like clockwork. And it was. You did a beautiful job. Thank you. But, that's, but, but what you really want to hear, and you're going to hear, when God says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he's saying that to all of you this morning, and I'm saying it to you. Thank you so, for doing such a great job yesterday. I hope there's going to be a whole bunch of souls in heaven because of the work that you did <laughs> yesterday, okay? Because you gave out a testimony, and people saw it. And some of them will, will come here, maybe, as time goes on. They'll find their way here when they're looking for a church that is serious about God, a church filled with saints, saints that love each other. Hey, you know what the number one thing people are looking for in a church when they come and visit? Love. Love, love is not just a surface thing. Love is, 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 is to have a relationship where you can sit and talk with people and it goes back and forth, you know, and sometimes it's correction, sometimes it's just encouragement, you know, and uh, 
But that's a family, and we're a family of God. And today, uh, yesterday, you proved it. Okay? I just praise God for you. Is there anybody here today who would like to rededicate their life? Is there anybody here today that would like to receive Christ as their Savior? You, ne- you never accepted Christ. You never prayed the sinner's prayer. Uh, anybody here today that needs to be baptized? Is there somebody here today that would like to join this church? You come forward and make that public. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll praise God for you. you. You come forward and make that public. Whatever you need, we invite you to come as we sing. The altar's open. Hi, I'm Kenneth Catamaturi, a pastor of Friendship Baptist Church here in Stewartstown, Pennsylvania. I hope that you enjoyed the service. I hope that you got some real meat out of our message, that something that will change your life, something that will uh, encourage uh, you uh, in your daily living. If you would like to support this ministry, uh, we just ask you to, to send your donations to uh, 14874 Winterstown Road, Stewartstown, Pennsylvania, 17363. Uh, the, the phone number, if you'd like to ask questions, is 717-818-7943. We sure enjoyed having you here today and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow and next week uh, as we continue to preach God's holy word. Thank you.